Welcome to Ask GMBN Tech. This is the weekly Q&A show. You ask the questions and hopefully we give you some sort of answer to uh, help you out. Uh, If you've got any technical mountain bike related questions, get them in the comments underneath for us to see. Use that hashtag Ask GMBN Tech. Or you can send them into the email address on the screen. That's hellotech at askgmbn.com. Yeah, so first we have got a question from Ak Pearson. Okay. Now, this is a question we get a lot. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. So hopefully we can shed some light on it and maybe, basically he's, he, well, I'll pose you his question. I would like to put the new RockShox Lyric RC2 2019, which is a fantastic fork. Yep. And the Super Deluxe Coil Shock, which is a fantastic shock. Yep. But here's the sticking bit. Okay. On my giant Anthem. No, don't do it. Yeah, just, uh, I mean, I, actually, I used to have one of those Anthems. They're incredible bikes. It's There's an so XC bike. Fun, but it's an XC bike. Yeah. I actually had a 130mm fork on there, which is what they actually spec for the 27. Yep, sure. It's agile, it's capable, but it's not a plow bike. And I think when you put a big fork on that, it's going to open up the terrain you do. And then p- potentially, people don't realize is the, the, the bike will be more capable than it was intended to be. Yeah, for sure. The amount of stress you're going to end yeah. up putting through that frame, the leverage of that long fork. Mm. Um, it's just. Even if the frame was strong enough, it's not going to ride that well. You're going to yeah. bump up the BB on it. And it's, and it's, it's really he- easy for us here to say. Be like, oh yeah, don't do it. But when people want to change perhaps the way their bike is, but it's, sometimes it's a, it's a can of worms. I think if you want to make the bike more capable, there's other ways of doing that. By yes. getting your suspension that you've already got, getting mm-hmm. that tuned, or maybe even extended slightly, but we're talking about 10 or 20 mil, not, yeah. not a whacking great amount yes, totally. in a one. Um, but if you're that desperate for something like a Lyric or a Super Deluxe Coil, then it's really the wrong bike. Maybe you should consider instead of spending that money, looking at a new frame and fork option, mm-hmm. yeah. I would have said. Okay, so next up is from Tom Luscombe. I'm planning on buying an Airdrop Lux Enduro bike and I'm wondering whether to get Airshock or Coil. I'm quite a heavy rider and I like to send big things and I'm quite scared about putting lots of pressure in my current shock and bottoming out quite often. Um, I'm near the limit of the max pressure. Do you think a Coil Shock would be tougher and be able to handle more? Plus, uh, the spring I'll be using would be 550 pound plus. So would it be designed for my weight and um, more suitable than the Airshock? Yeah, so the Airdrop bikes are actually a really cool brand and it's great to shed a bit of light on, you know, a small UK brand. Yep. Um, now, I personally wouldn't like to be on some of my bikes in the past. I'm right up on the PSI yeah. rating and it's not somewhere you want to be. Well, you also have to crank up the rebound as well. Mm. Everything has to work harder. Well, this is what I was going to say. It's not... Will a, will, will a coil shock be a bit more robust? Probably a bit better for your heavy hitting riders. Yeah. Yeah, it will be. And probably give you better mid-stroke support as well. But... Don't be afraid to ask the question that is it normal that say if you get somebody that's, you know, say the same size bracket in terms of reach, but you know, just skin and bone, they're gonna have the same rebound and damping tune as, as you if you're a bit of a, a stockier rider. So I would say maybe you call, if you wanted to really delve into it, maybe talk to a suspension tuning company and ask for a firmer compression tune, which will basically stop you being able to sit in the middle of the setting, not at the extremity, which is where you want to be to find a good setup. Yeah, absolutely. I'd yeah. also say, speak to Airdrop because it changes on frame to frame. I actually used to work with James. He's a great guy, one of their designers. Send him an email. I'm sure they'll uh, more than happy to help and provide some insight, really. Yeah, and, and also something else that's important to remember, um, not just in Airdrop's case, but if any of you out there are thinking of just putting a coil on your bike that's currently got an air shock, it doesn't always work that well mm. because of the fact that an air shock is quite progressive by nature of the air ramping up and a coil shock tends to be quite linear by comparison. Mm. So if you have a bike that's um, quite a progressive feeling bike with that air shock on it, you're going to change the characteristics yes. of that. They don't always translate. So it's something that we recommend you check with the manufacturer before you go ahead and do that. Yeah, and also there are some frames which run air shocks and they actually do it for stiffness. If you run a coil in there and they've got long yokes from the stays, yeah. they often can nail the internals or in some cases even snap, snap that was often like a nine millimeter shaft i've seen worse than that i've seen bodies yeah. crumpling half from exactly that yeah so same issue yeah so kind of trust the engineers to know what they're doing it by all means yeah. explore ask the questions but it yeah. really does depend which specific frame you're running yeah so definitely look into that before you go too far um okay so another great question here so this one's from davio it says how do i make my xc bike feel more aggressive Ooh. I mean, without delving, in fact, it kind of relates back to that question with that. Because this is quite loose and open, this yes. one. I'd say there are two areas. There's your cockpit. Yep. So bar-stem combo, which makes a lot of difference. Um, 
For me, a big one is tyres. Often cross-country bikes come with paper-thin sidewalls. They do, yeah. And those tyres kind of, you know, I say like prang off stuff, like bing, bing, because you have to run them quite high PSI. Yeah, to avoid it, them slashing. Yeah. yeah, totally. If you get something like a thicker sidewall tyre, the amount of damping it will open up, as well as having deeper tread, it will be amazing. It's and enabling like, you to run that softer pressure in the first yeah, place. Yeah, totally. And just, it always makes you... I feel like it makes your suspension feel better. So take some hints from some of the pros. In the show last week, we were talking about Kate Courtney's setup and Yolanda Neff, who are both using dropper posts mm -hmm. on their hardtail cross-country bikes. And they're both also using quite wide tyres with wide supportive rims and low tyre pressure. Mm -hmm. So I think you're absolutely bang on, Henry. Yeah, tyres will change everything initially yeah. um, on how your bike handles. But with your cockpit, of course, you could put a wider bar on, which will increase your control. But just putting a wider bar on also, effectively it's gonna make your bike feel a bit longer because it stretches out your position. So you have to counter that with a shorter stem, but you yeah. can go too far. So it's really important to not mess up the handling of yeah. your bike when you're doing that. Totally. Okay, next up is from Donut Tolj. Um, UK brand Collective Bikes released C100 Hartel. It's got a drivetrain comparable to bikes three times its price. Can you investigate? It could be the best 500 euro or sub 500 euro bike out there. Um, I've not seen these ones yet. Yeah, I had a little peek. Now okay. it is a well spec bike. Yep. It's got, I think it's got Z cranks on which for 500 quid. Is this one of those wheelie bikes? But this is the thing. Yeah, I've it's, seen it. It's geometry, I think with very long chain stays, it's meant yeah. to have a large balance point when wheeling. Yeah. It's not gonna feel great on the trail. And I think the biggest indicator of this is it's got those Z cranks, which are great cranks. Yeah. It's got the Shimano chain ring, which is great, but it's a non, it's a regular chain ring, it's not narrow wide. So you go down a trail on that, even a light cross country chain's trail, your off. chain's gonna constantly be coming off. It's meant yeah. for wheeling, for probably a bit of skate park, yeah. you know, urban riding. And also it's got a 34 tooth chain ring and not really- Not a big range of gears on the back. Not a big range of gears, you're gonna be plumbing yeah. it. <laughs> so I guess it's one of those things that um, definitely looks good from a distance and- uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, so. it's, it's a great deal if you want a bike to do wheelies on. If you're after an all round mountain bike, there are other brands there out there other brands, you can get yeah. a good price, yeah. Now we have a question from Ryan Coniendo. What is the possible reason why rotors bend? He's using Shimano RT66 for a week when I hear noises from my rotors. It never bumps into, it hasn't taken any hits and his caliper's well aligned. Um, it depends if you mean actually bent as in physically damaged bent, mm -hmm. in which case you can do that easily by leaning your bike on something or accidentally bashing it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it sounds like it's probably contracting in that as they do mm -hmm. when they, they get hot basically. Yeah. Just like you hear the same sort of noises with cars once you turn them off, everything's contracting and expanding and yeah. Yeah, tinging and picking, picking, pinging, all that sort of stuff <laughs> going on. Um, yeah, and they kind of straighten out again at the same time as well. Yeah. I think those RT66, I'm pretty sure were just stamped steel. Yep, okay. So they're not one of those laser cut, like the higher end. Yeah, ones. so it's not gonna have the rotor that moves independently. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I think a lot of the time, and this is obviously kind of a bit presumptuous, but a lot of it's braking technique. Mm -hmm. If you can do sh short, sharp bursts of braking, so if you're braking for 10 seconds, instead yep. of holding on for 10 seconds, do you know, four blocks of nearly two and a half seconds, do you see what I mean? Yeah, just yeah. to let the heat out, you're amazed how quick they cool down. Um, and often time it's just heat. If, if it's your rear one doing it more than the front, then it's definitely heat. But also sometimes you can't do that. Let's say you're riding a bike park, mm -hmm. you end up dragging you back brake. Dragging your brakes, you're yeah. running a brake yeah. hard the whole time. Um, in which case, maybe if that is something you're doing, you need a bigger rotor yeah. or you do need a two part rotor mm -hmm. or one yeah. of the other options. Yeah, I think it's just, um, yeah, we were talking about earlier one, but high quality brake rotors are something people often overlook. Yeah, and they I, make a significant they difference. They make a they? significant difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, there we go, there's another Ask GMBA Tech in the bag. You got any questions or you got any questions you want to ask us about the show, uh, get them in the comments underneath. Uh, for a couple more videos, click down here for some Camelback hacks, uh, applicable to any hydration pack I just used to Camelback in the video. And if you want to see Martin give me an absolute grilling on last week's Ask GMB oh, and that's Tech, good. Yeah. please click there, it's pretty humiliating and kind of takes me apart. <laughs> Rightly so. Um, yeah. As always, don't forget to give us a huge thumbs up if you love what we do here at GMBN Tech and give us any suggestions for more videos and we'll make them underneath. Cheers, guys. Cheers.